Hi, I'm coming to you all sweaty and worked up after my time with Stasia, mm, mm, who's our guest this week. And no, it's not from the episode we recorded. It's from me taking her class. She records these badass workouts that I heard about from my friend Reagan. You all know Reagan. She's my co-host on the sister podcast, Unfiltered Universe. And she was like, it's so much fun. She did stand up, blah, blah, blah. I was like, wait, someone that did stand up? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, she swears. And she just reminds you that you're fucking hot and that workouts are boring and they suck. But then you get to be fucking hot. And I was like, oh, well, I like all of that. So had her on the show. Great time. You'll see we step right into conversation. I'm not even going to edit it, like jump in with us as we do. And then it came time for this episode to air and I was like, I better do some of her workouts. And I'm like kind of stationed at my parents' house right now in kind of the boonies of Pennsylvania. And the workouts are just kind of not it, like the local studios. So I was like, all right, it's time. I got to do the thing. So I signed up for the package that is called Get Your Ass to Class. And I did two classes so far. The first was a Slutty Ballerina. And then just now I did PMS Rage. Great. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. I think I took the first one on Monday. Today is Thursday because my calves were so freaking sore after the first class. I was like, there's no way I can get my ass back to class. So I had to take a little breather. I did do some hot yoga in between. So yay, kudos for me. But I essentially ignored the freaking package that I signed up for. Uh, what was also interesting, and, and let me tell you, these are legit workouts, right? They're inspiring. She's got like that blend of no bullshit, but then she like throws in these like Abraham Hicks kind of vibes. It's, you know, real legit, full body fitness, tighten your pussy and your ass kind of workouts. And then within that, like you're entertained, which we love. So legit did the first class was really angry after. I don't know if it's just because of what we did. We were doing some, we we're doing a lot of inner thigh stuff. So I'm pretty sure I triggered something from within, right? So I was like really bitter and angry, but then I felt good. But then, you know, the next day I felt really freaking sore. And then I just did this one and I liked PMS Rage a little bit better. The workout was a little bit more to my fancy and I don't feel angry. I just feel good and excited to eat some food after this so check her out check out her program it's called school of thought and it's t-h-o-t -T. if you love that blend of fitness don't want to get to the gym want someone to be real with you no one's going to sugarcoat it like working out can suck it can be boring it can be like oh not feel so great uh it can be struggle bus but it gets you results physically, mentally, emotionally, all that good stuff. And she has a really great community. I adored seeing so many people on the, I did not do it live. I just did the replays and uh, so many like lovely, delightful people on there. So it's great. I highly recommend you check it out, but like get, get a feel of her, get her vibe with this episode. Here we go. Mm. is for I, I was like I think I want to move to Austin but like I'm not doing the whole sign a lease all the things so put my stuff in storage been here for the spring but like yeah I don't think people realize the beauty of Airbnb you don't have to worry about unpacking like you rearrange some things you know and like make it your own so and then you can just go be in the city you're not waiting for a couch yeah. to be delivered or like any of that stuff oh. and like you don't even have to pay for toilet paper it's like it's all I know. It's there. It's very freeing. At first, I was like, 
because I gave up, I was renting like the house of my dreams in Venice Beach and I gave that up to come here. And then I had a house here and then long story, drama, whatever, signed a lease with the man, which I'll only ever now have leases in my own name. Um, and now I'm like Airbnb life. And I thought I was going to be like, so, cause I'm a Taurus and I just like love stability. I'm a total homebody. Yeah. And now I'm like, well, I'm still a homebody. I'm just like a nomadic homebody. And it's like weirdly so freeing. Right. It's the best feeling. I'm like, I don't need to worry about the power bill, the this, the nothing. I'm just coming and going. So I'm, I'm into it right now. I'm into it. I am too. And like, and if you do it on a monthly basis, the, it's not that much more expensive than paying your rent. Well, definitely not in Greece. It's In Venice Beach, it's a nightmare. But in yeah. Greece, it's like, it's incredible. I'm like, yeah. So I, I'm really into the idea of not having to buy furniture again for a long time. <laughs> That's who I am too. I really, like I sold most of my stuff. I also was like getting rid of, like getting away from a dude, you know? So it's just like, let's just start. Freedom. 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 Yeah. So, okay. So you're, you're in an Airbnb in Greece right now? Yeah. I'm in, I'm in Athens. I'm in a neighborhood that I've never, I, I've lived a long time. Well, not a long time, but I've lived in Greece for a while, but, or I go back and forth, but I've never lived in this neighborhood and I'm in like a strange neighborhood I've never been in. And it's like, it's been like <laughs> the Airbnb I booked just for the balcony because the balcony is sick. And the Airbnb is fine. But then I was like, usually I stay right next to the Acropolis and I'm like probably half an hour away. And so I took, oh, okay, there. So there, my lights went out. Is it okay without my lights? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we mainly do this for the right. audio. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was t walking my dog around and I'm like, oh, I'm in the, str I'm in like Bulgaria. I'm like, I, this is, <laughs> this is not where I'm meant to be. But also it's kind of fun because yeah. like I had no, you know, when you're booking something from like another country, you're like, it's close enough. That looks good. And then you get there and you're like, oh, this is not at all close to where I thought I was going to be. Now I but know why this was such a good deal. Yeah, exactly. I know. I'm like, oh, this is why it was so cheap. <laughs> no. eh, it's fine. How long are you going to be there for? Just a month. And then... I'll find somewhere else. <laughs> right. No, I feel you. I mean, I'm here for like two more weeks and then my parents are actually going to be in Italy. So I'm going to go head that way. Night. Are you Italian? I am. Where are they in Italy? So uh, mainly, it's, well, so my Italian side is split between like Naples, more mm -hmm. southern Italy. Italy. <laughs> and then I have some family up near Venice as well. My sister lives in Tuscany, just southern Tuscany, like just two hours north of Rome. That's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. Italy's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, go to Italy. Go to Italy. Stay in Italy. Stay in Find an Italian man. Marry him. Get your permanent yeah. residence visa. But, but, but <laughs> if you're going to do it, wait until October of 2025 because I'm hosting a retreat there then. Yeah. Plug. Cool. Yeah. Anyway. Amazing. Where? Uh, Tuscany. It's a Tuscan retreat. I know. Okay, amazing. Yeah, so we're putting it out there now for everybody. But also, you can go ahead of time, meet your dude, and then... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd be so happy. <laughs> um, Love that. Okay, yay. So wait, you have your doggie with you, too? I do. He's an intercontinental dog. Yeah. I found his head transport. He's... Huh. I mean, he's tough. He's like... Bit, he's 90 pounds. He's like a killer. Um, And he travels really well. And... I didn't realize I was, you know, I'm just sort of winging everything, but I, I just cannot, the more time I spend abroad, then when I go back to LA, I'm like, uh, I don't know. I love it for like a few weeks. And then I'm like, okay, I'm sick of being poisoned. Yeah. Gotta go. I mean, so, that's no, I feel like any city in our country. Yeah, I love a relationship. I know it's and I because I was here for like eight months straight when I came back to LA I was like I was like I wonder if I'm gonna feel a difference like probably not I'm just being like so you know overly sensitive and that yeah exactly and then I got back to LA and I'm like everything's itching I'm like I, I completely felt the difference like I felt stressed right away like I felt like oh my god I gotta go buy this I need this I need this I need to buy this and I was like Jesus like it it just goes away when you're 
Well, I mean, when I'm in Greece, you know, it's like, well, first of all, like, there's no Amazon Prime, you know, so like, especially when you want, are. To, yeah, yeah, exactly. Greece, you're like, yeah. I'm like in Moldova right now. It's what it feels like. But it's like, if you want something, you have to go get it. And if they don't have it, you don't get it. Right. And that's it. It's like living 30 years ago. And it's like so refreshing to not have everything at your fingertips right away. And then I appreciate it when I'm in LA. I'm like, oh, wow, I'll just order this one thing to be delivered in an hour. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah. But it's nice to have a break from that and to not feel like, oh, my God, I have to buy all these things to, like, be the best version of myself. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> you yeah, know? I get that. I felt that when I lived in L.A. So I, I did two rounds of L.A. I did once Nomadic, and I, I loved L.A. Nomadic. Mm -hmm. That was really fun. Yeah. And like, oh, I love it. I'm going to move here. So I moved to, like, Hermosa Beach, that area. Oh, that's cool. It was. <laughs> Coolish, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of like where you are now. I'm like you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, uh, I mean, I was able to get a, what I why I chose that area because I was able to get a place like right on the water. So like that was really yeah. great, you know. And I did my little beach walks, but then yeah, I just felt like yeah, I was just stressed all the time. It didn't, I didn't, I felt like I couldn't manage my life there. And then I, yeah, I was, and I'm not even like a competitive person. I don't have imposter syndrome. Like I don't have time. Yeah, for that. I'm Leo. Yeah, so, you know, I get yeah. Yeah. yeah, Leo stuff. And I felt like. I just felt like there was always something to do, always someone to compare myself to, yeah. like always someone else that was like ahead of me. And I just, yeah, I just found myself constantly stressed. And I was like, I'm yeah, it's nonstop. It's nonstop. I mean, I'm like, and I'm a homebody everywhere I go, but for some reason in LA, I just constantly am feeling like nothing I'm doing is enough or, I you know, or like. And then when I'm here, it's like I sleep. Well, it's great being 10 hours ahead of L.A. because I'll just sleep in with no alarm. And like at first that was so I was like, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? I'm like so lazy. I'm like sleeping nine hours a night. Like, am I OK? And and then it's like everyone here, there's no shame around sleep or rest here. It's like, yeah, sleep like siga, siga, slowly like chill. And and now I'm just like, no, actually, I'm so much healthier here. Like my nervous system is so much more settled here because it's like. You can rest without feeling bad about resting, you know? Right. Because rest is literally our bodies chose it as part of its design. So rest is productive, you know? But when you're in LA, it's like, oh my God, like I, I, I shouldn't be sleeping more than like six hours a night. Otherwise I'm like fucking something up, you know? And That's it's like, like, why didn't you wake up at 5 a.m. and do your- Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Self-care is like stressful in LA, you know, it's like. Self-care is so stressful in LA. I'm like. My body hated me. I actually gained, I gained weight when I lived in LA. Uh, I put on like 15 pounds and I think it was because of the stress of self-care and the guilt of like, like I felt guilty for taking a day off or I felt guilty yeah. for just watching TV. Yeah. Yeah. And I think my body was like feeling that and like, yeah, I feel pressure. Like, yeah, my body responds. And it was like. Yeah, it was wonky. So yeah, I, yeah. So I'm really just appreciating being here. I'm like, there's everything is fine. You know, everything is fine. <laughs> you know? I mean, and I weirdly feel like safer here. Like, well, yeah. I mean, in LA, it's like there's one night last month when I was there, there were like, I thought it was fire. I was like, for sure, it's fireworks. Someone's just set, setting off fireworks because it's like a Tuesday night, whatever they're celebrating. But like, for sure, it's fireworks. It's not gunshot. That's crazy. No, come to find out, it was 20 gunshots. Some guy who like works in a restaurant went out to the parking lot and shot off an AK-47, some machine gun, some automatic weapon, 20 gunshots. It was like all over the news. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I couldn't fall asleep because there were 20 gunshots, automatic weapon gunshots. Like that's insane, you know? So, and in Marina Del Rey, it's like a nice area. Ask where, yeah. And, and you're paying extra to live yeah, and my airbnb was six thousand dollars and i'm hearing an automatic gunfire i mean that's like i'm like this place is just it's too much i'm like eggs are twelve dollars i'm good it's I insane know. it's yeah it's a lot but then at the same time like don't be wrong if i were to get on an airplane and go there next week i'd be like i'm having the best time ever oh yeah and trust me i'm gonna go back in a couple months because i need to get my hormones checked you can't do that shit here you know there's plenty of things in la that i'm like okay i'm so grateful that i have access to both but and i know i'm so lucky that i like have the ability to be in both places but 
yeah, for me, it's like, I can't be, I can't be like long-term there and I can't really be long-term. I need both, you know, <laughs> I, I can't be like way. full villager and I can't be full LA girl, you know? Yeah. I'm the same. <laughs> I've lived in a lot. Like I lived in New York, LA, Philly. Now I'm in Austin. So I, I can't, I tried doing like mountain life and I loved it for what it was. And now, now that I'm here though, I'm kind of missing the mountains again. And I think I've just accepted that. No place to ever check all these boxes. I know. And can I just, yeah, find that hybrid of life? I know. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, when I'm here, I miss LA. And when I'm in LA, I miss here. And it's like so annoying, you know? And I try to just like appreciate where I am when I'm there because. Yeah. 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 It is what it is. The, the, sweet. Did you just have a birthday or are you going to have a birthday? I did. I, April 24th was my birthday. Happy belated. 41. Thanks. 41. Thank you. I'm going to be 41 yeah. in August. Oh yeah, dude. It's good so far. Yeah. Oh, the first ten <laughs> of making it like great. I was cool with turning forty. I was I was too. Yeah. But then I was like, oh I and I even like being like, I'm forty. I look at me, new decade. But yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm adding a one to that. Yeah, forty one was less exciting than forty, but I mean I honestly like I'm get I am getting hotter better stronger funnier richer i mean it's like it's better it's better the older we get it's better it can be you know so um i'm trying not and plus you know 40 for us is not the same as it was for our parents you know what i mean like we take so, so much better care of ourselves and we have all the you know yeah. who knows by the time we're 50 they'll have some concoction we can take to reverse <laughs> can't wait no. until I can look like I'm seven. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Please. Benjamin Button. My it. brows will be like full again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it is really interesting. I mean, I also love like looking at like when they show like this is the cast of Cheers who were literally like in I know. their movies. And I'm I like, know. But can you imagine if they came up on like a dating app like Norm? No, I know. Like the Golden Girls are like not that much older than us, and they look like great grandmothers. It's insane. It's just the bad haircut. It's like we're just wearing our hair long now. We're wearing our hair long. I think that's part of it. Making yeah. us better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Botox. I also, yeah, all the things. I also feel like the in the in a weird way, I think filters have like tricked us into thinking we do look like that, and so then mm -hmm. we're kind of morphing a little bit. Like outside of the hundred percent. I'm like, I'm like so young. It's I like know. not what I'm Yeah, totally. I do a filter and I'm like, I am rocking it in this way. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, like pretty soon we're just gonna have filters on our eyes whenever the neural link comes out anyway. So. True. Yeah. Once we put in the I, like we'll just have a contact lens that we wear and then mm -hmm. everyone's just filter. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wonder if that would probably help with like the world of hooking up and whatnot. Like, what if there was a dude? Yeah, like you, you just have beer goggles. <laughs> oh my god, virtual beer goggles. That's a great idea, actually. That's a great idea for a business in the future. Yeah, I'm gonna write this down. <laughs> I'm really into AI, so like maybe that'll be my big thing. I mean, yeah, everyone would get that. Everyone would get that. I mean, I guess it would increase the population again. Yeah, people would start having babies again. Yeah. Genius, Danielle. You need to, like, patent that now. <laughs> I mean, think about it, though, because how many times have you been on a date with someone? You're like, they're really great, X, Y, and Z. They're good on paper, but, like... Too bad I'd never fuck him. <laughs> yeah. But then, I know. I know. Put a filter on it. I know. It's those hot guys really fuck us up, you I know? I know. They really do. The ones with nothing to offer except <laughs> our looks. This is the antidote. Do you struggle with it's, only being yeah. attracted to hot, <laughs> broke, unavailable men? And like the beta version is like glitching and not working, and you're just like, fuck. Like in the middle of sex, like they yeah, you're like, out. I can't finish. <laughs> Quick doggy style. We need to <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. something. <laughs> Your real, your real colors are showing, <laughs> and I'm gonna lose my. Your real face is showing, Jesus. <laughs> You're scaring my vagina. So we need to, we need to switch this up. All right, on it. I'll keep you posted. You can, be, you can be an angel investor. Okay, great. I love it. Okay, so You're in Austin, you got Elon right there. I do. I mean, he's not the greatest to look at. <laughs> no, he's doing fine. I mean, he's doing fine. So <laughs> I mean, I think what that's what some women do, right? Like the beer goggles is the money, right? It's like, okay, if they have enough wealth, that makes up for their looks. But I still can't do that. 
Yeah, I mean, I've never been able to do that, unfortunately, for me. <laughs> you know what? Okay, this is not... And I know that you're like, you've had your journey with sobriety and I'm not fully sober now, but I did go through periods where I was and my rock bottom. And the reason why I chose to get help, this was uh, like 15 years ago, was I had this one night stand. I woke up in the morning and this man was so wildly unattractive. And I remember mm -hmm. thinking that he was attractive the night before. And I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh. Who, and it, it was more than I need help. You're like, I need help. But I literally, I remember waking up and being like, yeah, I need help. God, I'm ready. I'm, re I'm ready. Like, I realized that you had to send me a wildly short, bald, unattractive man that kind of smelled to make me realize I need to put this stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I brought a homeless man home before, so I'm with you. I mean, and I didn't really, he was so hot. This guy was so hot and like musical and like we had like a magical night and then the next morning and he didn't sleep over, but then he was trying to and I was like, now go. Yeah. And later I found out because he didn't have a fucking house, but I was walking on the boardwalk to get coffee in the morning and he was literally on the side of the boardwalk like asking for change and I'm like, oh my God. Oh, you really wanted to sleep over. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like I literally needed to sleep over. <laughs> yeah. So that and was one of the actually clues. weren't even looking yeah. at her cup. You were just yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't like me at all. You just liked my fucking roof. Got it. Okay. Yeah. You liked the fact that my sink had water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting what, um, but you know, it's fine that you can c treat that as charity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've done a lot of charity in my life. <laughs> well, charity of food. But now I feel like you're giving back in a much different way. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, better. better. When, when, so when was the catalyst for you where you were just like, okay, maybe I should explore this idea of taking care of myself? Uh, well, I got sober in 2011, end of 2011, and... I mean, I had some pretty rock bottom moments. One of them was like waking up to the fucking SWAT. T I was living like with the biggest drug dealer in Venice Beach. And um, and waitressing. And I woke up to like a SWAT team in the house with like eight, eight SWAT guys like on the back of their coats. Like, at, like an episode of Law and Order with like guns down and everything. And I was like, wait, they didn't see me. I was in the corner like waking up from a disco nap and my... They let me go, thank God. But that was one of the clues that, like, maybe I wasn't making, like, the greatest choices. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just a series of just, like, insane events where I was like, this is not, like, how I was. I'm like a good girl. What happened, you know? Yeah. Um, so I got sober in 2011. And then, like, everything about my life changed. And, you know, it. I thought that like my life was crazy so I drank because my life was crazy but my life was crazy because I was drinking so much you know so um and then once I got sober it just sort of like was the cat like I went to AA and AA was really like the catalyst for like finding any sort of spiritual life you know which is why I think I mean AA for sure saved my life and you know, I used to, I was just saying this on a podcast the other day, but like, I used to be so annoyed by like the older people on AA who would be like, I'm so grateful. I'm a grateful alcoholic. You know, I'd be like, what the fuck are you grateful for? Like, this is a mess. We're all in a room. We can't drink. Like, we're all fucking losers. What are you grateful right. for? Right. And now I realize what they meant is like, had all those like rock bottom moments not happened, I wouldn't have been like forced to evolve I wouldn't have been forced to find a spiritual connection I would have just gone on like being a good girl and like doing my little job you know like I never would have been forced to like deal with myself so so now it is like you know my rock bottom moments are like the things that now I don't have to be ashamed of now it's like oh no that was actually like just legitimizing my ability to like be of service to other people now, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it took me a long time to not feel shame for everything, but, but now I don't. So I will it took me 40 years to get there, but hey, it takes what it takes. Yeah, no, it totally does. And to your point, whenever that moment where it takes what it takes happens, you're so grateful. You're so grateful. Yeah. For 40 years, you would have been grateful if it took 60 years, right? Like it's just, yeah. 
Well, sexy would be really pushing it, but <laughs> sexy would not be <laughs> Hey, I'm trying to put this in perspective for our six year old listeners, okay? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I feel like the moment it happens is always just like, I get it. I get it. I get why it happened the way that it did. And I'm glad that it stopped when it did. Yeah, 100%. And it's like, you don't realize that until later down the line. Like, oh, okay. That's why I was a fucking train wreck for so long okay 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 got it okay you know right but like how were we supposed to realize that in our 20s you're not you're not that's why you couldn't pay me enough money to do my 20s over again fuck no no i've thought about that or even like if i had a time machine to go back and tell myself i wouldn't have listened to myself I'd be like, no never sure, danielle great yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go out. See yeah, you also like how boring if you have all your shit together by 20 anyway, you know? <laughs> so you need point. years to fuck up, you know? Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, I, I have zero regrets. It was an adventure, for sure. Um, And I'm happy to be where I am now. Yeah. <laughs> Watching TV all the time with my dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peaceful. Yes. No. You too could have this life with. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. This that's like a good intro of TV. What a way to just watch. Yeah. But I think that's why I enjoy watching other people's drama because I actually did not like reality TV until I started working on myself because I was like, oh, at least that's like I can watch them. You're like, yeah, it was like too close. Yeah. Exactly. Close I was like, I know you're like, oh yeah, I can watch from my. <laughs> pedestal of serenity and peace happy that it's not me 90 day fiance is a good one if you like trash reality tv show oh, that one that one will reel you in that will reel you in that will give you so much drama and so much to be distracted from outside mm -hmm. in the outside world mm -hmm. you just want to get away from it all mm -hmm. if you need to unplug after a long day just put that on mm -hmm. like, that's a lot better so we love yeah it. yeah we love reality so you mentioned the idea of like having spirituality. Like, what does that mean for you? Like, when when you say you're spiritual, what does that look like? Um. Well, I guess just like the the tangible things are. I meditate every morning for 15 minutes. I start my day before my meditation. Like the second I wake up, I put on Abraham Hicks and I listen to Abraham Hicks for at least like 30 minutes. <laughs> like as just to like get like starve out the uh, insane thoughts that will naturally come if I don't do that um and then I'll do my meditation and I'm honestly a lot of the things I learned in AA like I'm I'm constantly praying and doing mantras and just trying to like control the carnival between my ears you know um so I I do a lot of meditating praying and then like I really practice just like whenever I'm having like any sort of negative spiral start to happen. I just like immediately reroute it and like launch my way out of everything. So like, you know, I mean, it is a little bit crazy. I think when you're like learning to control your thoughts and like choose new thoughts, it kind of feels like you're like an insane person at first because like if I feel the anxiety or the crazy thoughts coming, then immediately I'm like, things are happening for me, not to me. Things are happening for me, not to me. Things are happening for me, not to me. Things are happening for me. <laughs> and it's like, but now I've gotten to the point where it's just so it's second nature that like I really do feel like I trust the universe with whatever is happening in my life like no matter how crazy or negative or like insane it appears to be that it really is happening for my highest good or the highest good and that like like we were saying before I may not understand what why yet but I will and that like I think it's I think that being spiritual is really just like trusting that the universe supports you and that that miracles are always happening and that like things are always happening for you and not to you and even if you don't understand that that you trust that that is the truth and then it's just sort of easier to not live in a constant state of like victimhood you know if you feel like just a, a trust in the universe or god whatever you want to call it you know i love that no so, yeah and i and i think meditation helps a lot too i mean i i really it took me a long time to be able to do that and i probably have only been doing it regularly for like five, five years ish 
but I can really tell a fucking difference if I don't do it. I mean, it's like, it's really crazy. You know, it just kind of feels like a shower for your brain, you know, and just, and I'm not like a good meditator, you know, like I'm not, but Some right or wrong way. Yeah. To meditate. Yeah. But, and that's what I tell people. Cause whenever I'm telling like, a lot of times I'll tell, you know, clients, like, you should tr start, try meditating. I mean, like, I know, you know, and they're like, well, I'm not good at it. I'm like, yeah, me neither. But it doesn't matter. Like, it's just the ritual, the practice of sitting down and closing your eyes. And like, I'll do a mantra in my head as I meditate. And that, of course, you're going to have like intrusive thoughts. And like that, the goal is to not just is to not be Buddha. But if you just think of the goal is just like, yeah. resetting everything, you know, so that you're just a little bit quieter in your head for the day, you know? Yeah. And if anything, too, I say it's it's time off your phone. It's time. Mm -hmm. like, even if you are oh, yeah. having thoughts and you're not able to kind of get into that, like, zone that maybe you'd like to be or find that sweet spot, yeah. at least you're still, like, saying, I'm choosing to separate from the noise right now. I'm choosing yeah. to not be on my phone, to answer these emails, to talk to anybody in my house, mm -hmm. give myself a little me time. And that's, like, yeah. right there. Yeah, exactly. Like not being on your phone, that is meditation now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like you don't even need to close your eyes. Just don't look at your phone. You're meditating. <laughs> so, Anything so. outside of looking out of, looking at yeah. is now meditation. Yeah, I know. it's kind of true. Or I tell people too, I'm like, just put on a song and, and listen to the song. Like, like there, it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be so, yeah, to the point of like, yeah. you're going to be the monk in the cave. Yeah, it doesn't have to be so precious. No, because honestly, I don't think they're doing that either. Yeah, who knows what they're doing? I don't know. Well, I think they're making, they actually, they're making liquor. <laughs> yeah, they're just all wasted. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> they're like, okay. They mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what kind, but yeah, it's like this liqueur was made by monks. I'm like, <laughs> you know, like the ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, so we're trying to be like, I'm. <laughs> The ones that say they can meditate all day, I'm like, well, you know, I can meditate all day if I'm blacked out too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I find that interesting. But yeah, I think that's really important. Do you, so do you weave in meditation as part of what you do with the school that you run? I weave in mantras. So I do like a breath water mantra section between each, there's three circuits in my workouts and between each circuit, we'll do breath water mantra. Mm -hmm which is literally just taking a few deep breaths, drinking a mouthful of water, and then repeating mantras. And I don't even know. I just kind of like randomly started doing it one day because I was just trying to practice it myself. And then it now has turned into like a huge part of my class. And like actually one of the things that I think is the most like, uh, like powerful parts of the class for people like regardless of like the movement it's like just learning not to talk shit to yourself you know or even just practicing saying things like i love my body i love myself it's like how many times have you ever said that naturally in your life as a woman i mean i'm sure some people do and great sure. but like so many of us it's like you know and, and i usually say it's like you know i'm irish italian girl from boston like i'm I hate him. Like I'm like I'm just naturally like by default, I just talk shit. I'm a hater. Like I, you know, totally. so, so to just practice saying things like miracles are happening or like, I love my body or like my body heals quickly. Like it's so uncomfortable to start saying things like that. And like, I know, and I always am telling like my class, like the more you think this is stupid and you wish I wasn't doing this in my class right now. And you are kind of like, why did I come to this fucking class? I'm just trying to like work out my ass. And now we're doing mantras. The more you need them, <laughs> like the, the more stupid you think this is, the more you need it, you know, coming from someone who like really needs it, you know? Um, and it's just, it's interesting because you can, you can even just see like in the little Hollywood squares in the Zoom class, like who, you know, who at first is like so uncomfortable that I'm saying, okay, like let's do mantras now. And, you know, everyone's on mute. So no one's hearing it except for me, but, or hearing myself. Um, but, you know, you can see some people get really uncomfortable. Like when you're saying, I love myself or like, I love my body. Like, and how fucked up is it that that's so feels so uncomfortable for us to say, I love my body, you know? And I think honestly, it's like really like a, an act of rebellion to 
to start saying things like that. And the more you say them, you start to believe them because the belief is just a thought you think over and over again. And then a belief is what creates your reality. So it's like, the, I remember one of the reasons I was so hardcore about mantras is like, this must have been, I don't even remember, maybe seven years ago or something. I was going through like a real, I was sober, but I was really depressed, like in a really bad, bad, bad depression. And maybe, I, I don't remember, seven-ish years ago. And um, I just, suicidal, just a nightmare, couldn't, my life was just completely unmanageable. And I started, I got transcranial magnetic stimulation where they like zap your fucking, like the, the psychiatrist gifted it to me because he's like, well, you're really, your brain is really a mess here. You just do it for free. That's Which what is, you know. Yeah, I'm like, wow. What <laughs> what like, case you, studies on me? What is this? Yeah, it's like an expensive treatment. So for him to give it to me was like a, a really big deal and a little uh, shocking. <laughs> you're like, oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs> um, and... And I was on like the highest dose of Wellbutrin and I just, this is still, that thing was like, and I was like, well, I'm just going to try all the hippie shit. Like, and I think this is probably around the time I started listening to Abraham Hicks too. Cause I was like, well, I'm going to just try everything. Cause otherwise I'm going to fucking kill myself. So we might as well get break out all the fucking big guns, you know? And so I wrote, um, on a whiteboard on top of my sink, miracles are happening. And I was like, okay, every time I see the whiteboard, I'm going to repeat miracles are happening like three times out loud. And like, I felt like an idiot. There's no fucking miracles happening in my life. I'm like in a teeny studio apartment, want to kill myself, like have, can't work. Like just everything's a mess. Right. This is, but I did it every time, but I would see the whiteboard all the time because the apartment's so fucking small. So I would do it every time. Go, miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. Miracles are like this is. I this is actually the most embarrassing part. Like not even the transcranial magnetic magnetic stimulation. Like this is real rock bottom that I'm fucking saying these mantras. You know, and I did it for months. And then one day I was like taking a shit in the bathroom, obviously, so I couldn't see the whiteboard, and I out of nowhere just and I just remember it so clearly just sitting on the toilet and out of nowhere I thought to myself miracles are happening which was like kind of funny because I was like taking a shit so it's like I'll put it in I'm back. like this shit yeah I mean, but like I remember being like oh my fucking god I just fucking brainwashed myself I just did it because I just had that thought come out of nowhere and I didn't see the whiteboard like this is you're insane. programmed yeah I programmed myself and I and I remember so specifically being like oh my fucking god like if it worked like I created a natural thought for myself by just repeating this mantra over and over again it fucking worked and so that to me was like a really pivotal moment because I was like I can reprogram my brain and I can choose these thoughts that are seem so ridiculous and stupid to me but like are way better thoughts than I'm gonna fucking kill myself which were the only other thoughts I was having right or I hate and so yeah so that's when so so that I started bringing them into my classes you know and you know I got really into like Joe Dispenza and Abraham, Abraham Hicks obviously and 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 it, it's all these mantras and affirmations like, yeah, it's woo woo, but it, you're also reprogramming your brain and it does work. And I have like evidence of it, you know, and now my life does feel like miracles upon miracles. And I really do feel like I'm the creator of my life now. And like I and I know that you know and I spend like a lot of time every week in my classes doing these mantras and and they don't sound stupid to me anymore. You know, they, they, and like, even if I choose a new mantra, like, I'm like, okay, I need to like work on this. Cause like, I know I still have like a lot of negative feelings about this or whatever. And I'll like create a mantra around it. And it, it just fucking helps. And you, you're, when you choose your thought and you just brainwash yourself with that thought and it feels stupid when you're doing it, yeah. eventually you make that thought more automatic. And that just is, that's what a belief is. And then your, your 3D reality starts to reflect that belief. So, and a lot of women now say that that like is the, the most powerful part of their, of my class for them is that they just stop talking shit to themselves and they start actually being like, oh, wow, miracles are happening. Like this, uh, like 
I'm starting to say this to myself. I'm starting to actually trust that things are happening for me, you know, and, and that shit gets me so fucking hyped, dude. Like even more than like, oh, I lost 20 pounds. Okay. That's great. That's amazing. I love that. But it makes yeah. me so happy to hear. Yeah. That like, oh, now you like believe in miracles or now you like are not calling yourself fat every time you look at yourself in the mirror. Right. You know, to me, that's like the real, like, that's the medicine. That's yeah. the you know, and that's yeah. really what you're teaching because even yes, the fitness is part of it. And, and, you know, losing weight is wonderful if that's your goal and all these different dynamics when it comes to fitness. But also for me, I'm a former binge eater and I yo-yoed back and forth my weight for a really long time. I was considered to be, you know, plus size, overweight, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So I was, I was the classic person who always was like, when I lose the 20 pounds, then I'll be happy. Then yeah. I'll be 20 pounds or the 30 pounds, the 40 pounds, whatever. And then I didn't know what to do with myself anymore. What? How do I yeah. act now as a now thin person? I don't know yeah. I, because I still hate myself because I'm still yeah. programmed to believe I'm fat. I'm still, yeah. you know, because the old programs were still running, even if I did lose the weight, it wouldn't matter because my mindset was so off that I would put the weight back on again anyway. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. part, of, part of my journey when I found that meditation was also a game changer for me Yeah, with actually feeling my body I had body dysmorphia so I couldn't like I look in the mirror yeah. and I just wasn't computing um, yeah so I felt like meditation helped me like be with my body and that was also mm -hmm. awkward right because I'm mm -hmm. like oh this thing feels uncomfortable yeah I'm sitting with it. yeah bodies are weird <laughs> bodies they're, are they're weird. lumpy and yeah bumpy and yeah, yeah funky uh <laughs> they're strange right but i love i love i love my body and and yes yeah. but and and to your point i started finding affirmations too and the thing is though it's gonna feel awkward it's gonna feel weird it's gonna feel false it feels and insane it feels insane great. but like what's more insane like constantly saying how much you hate yourself and like that you're not good enough and that you're disgust like that's actually so much more insane we're just used to that you know we weren't taught how to befriend ourselves to even just like Ooh. ourselves let's know I mean, we we're taught to hate ourselves so that we would buy the things that would make us love ourselves more you know we, we, women are like the biggest consumers it's like how much money do they make on us hating ourselves you know like so yeah, so it's it is I do think it's like a really like big act of rebellion to start being like, no, actually I love myself. Fuck you. <laughs> you know? I'm good. I love myself. Yeah, yeah. I got this. Um, I love myself. It's cool. And I'm not like perfect. I mean, I have to practice it all the time because it's like, you know, in AA they say like yesterday's shower doesn't keep you clean today, you know, and it's like that's a constant daily reprieve because I will automatically go back to my like factory settings, you know? So I have to constantly be doing this every day. And, but it makes a big difference. It makes a huge fucking difference. And it's just like thinking the thoughts, identifying as a person you want to be, not as the person that you see here right now, you know, it's like practicing the thoughts of the person you want to be practicing the thoughts of a fit person practicing the thoughts of a person who loves her body, you know, just practicing those thoughts, you know, totally. And eventually you can start, you can brainwash yourself into you becoming can. that person. Yeah. And then find a set. What helped me was finding a sense of neutrality in the present while having mm -hmm. the thoughts of the future mm -hmm. version of myself I desired. I was able to find a way to just be neutral in the present. Yeah. It's like, I'm not giving any power. Accepting. Yeah. Acceptance. And and then to your point too, consistency, right? This mm -hmm. is an overnight fix. Oh no. <laughs> no, it's forever. It's forever. I'm, yeah. But forever's gonna happen anyway. You know what I mean? Time is gonna pass anyway. So you might as well just be hitting all the nails on the head. You know, why not? Like if you haven't tried the mantras or affirmations, if you haven't tried it's like why not? Right. What else? What do you have to lose? You know? Nothing. Yeah, talking about how much, like, thinking these, like, self-loathing thoughts, like, probably isn't working, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, might as well just give it a go, you know? Yeah, and and sometimes we just have to get to that point where we're like, nothing is working, and it's like, mm -hmm. yes, nothing is mm -hmm. working. So Yeah, the gift of death nothing, parade. Right? Mm -hmm. Having a life of nothing is, is giving you nothing. So, yeah. if you start programming it with everything... Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and what can happen right mm -hmm. yeah Be open to it love it here for it so were you teaching fitness like this whole time I um I taught when I got sober I got really into spinning because mm -hmm. it like got me high you know yeah um so then I I taught spinning for years and then I was still waitressing and doing stand-up. And then um, maybe like six months before quarantine started, I got certified to be a personal trainer. I was teaching out of like a small uh, gym. And then when quarantine happened, I was just on the phone with a couple like stand-up comedian girlfriends. And I was also like, well, I, I can't, like, I don't want to get out of shape now. I just started personal training, you know? So I was like, okay, let's just get on Zoom and I'll, take us through some exercises it'll be stupid whatever just yeah three of us who cares right and then I told some other girlfriends and I ended up having like 25 girls in the first class and it was so fun we were so excited because we just like yeah got to talk and like right. it was community just hanging out you know and so then I just started teaching like every day just for fun it was then people started like donating over Venmo like five dollars twenty dollars here and there and I was like oh I'll make a little cash I'm on unemployment whatever and then um one of the girl one of my friends Laura Bites um lost 40 pounds and from doing my class and then she went onto Rogan and like talked about it and then it like turned into a business so so now here I am. And um, so that to me was really um, powerful for me because I realized, well, I'm doing this for free because like I love it and I'm good at it. And then the business kind of came after. And so and I always I'm I've always had imposter syndrome my whole life. I mean, I still get it, but I just constantly will remind myself like this is what I did for free for fun because I liked it and it felt good to be of service and I'm just naturally was good at it and so there's no way I can be an imposter because if you're doing something for free then that's like what you're supposed to do you know exactly. that's what I you know yeah. so I love that finding value in things that you could do for free finding yeah. when people are kind of stuck like I know I want to be doing something like what could you talk about all day long and not be exhausted mm -hmm. by after and again for free right like let's say you just had yeah. a day to go do whatever you love for the day what would the yeah. day look like and whatever that day looked like likely is connected to some kind of passion some kind of purpose yeah you know yeah and for me it was like you know I was had been doing stand-up for like eight years and for me like having my own class kind of like scratched that itch of like doing stand-up you know and and teaching and so it just sort of like felt like a full integration of who I was and before that I was like I wouldn't want people in stand-up to know that I was like training people and I wouldn't want people I was training to know I did stand-up you know I felt like it had to be separate you know yeah, and then this was really like the melding of that and I was like oh well this makes sense like when I'm bringing all of me into something then it's yeah. like that's what I'm going to be successful at oh duh you know well, it, it makes sense. And people need humor. I mean, what I find, so once I got into meditation, then I became a life coach. I do life coaching and astrology. And pre-pandemic, I was doing a lot of speaking. And I found that my best performances were the ones where I brought in humor because people, like, mm -hmm. it's serious. And I, I don't know why people sometimes think spirituality has to be so serious. Yeah. It has to be, like, so, like, stiff. Like, I mean, I remember even, like, I'd have like speaking gigs where they were like, we need your outline. We need it to be scientific. We need it to be this. And I would get all in my head of like, oh, they want me to be serious. And like, I'd be up on stage and I'd read the room and I'm like, I need to tell a joke or like, I yeah, yeah. like lighten this up because like that's, yeah. I find through laughter, people let their guard down. And when your guard is down, then you're open to like really receive. Yeah, it's just like more fun, you yeah. know, <laughs> you know, fun. and, and then like, absorbing like yeah. whole spiritual jumbo. Or yeah content yeah yes. you know like yeah. i don't do well in a fitness class where they're just like just saying the moves over and over and giving like an exhale like yeah no i mean it's the worst you know and i'm like yeah i yeah i mean i think my classes are successful because i'm i talk shit and i i'm good for people who need to be distracted when they're working out because i'm kind of just talking nonstop and, and talking shit and and then we do like the mantras in between so it's sort of a blend of like shit talking and yeah. spiritual mumbo jumbo but and you know 
I'm definitely not for everybody, but for the people who like, you know, need to be distracted, it's great, you know? So yeah, I mean, I'm not like a saccharine teacher. I'm not like, oh my God, it's so fun to work out. Like, no, working out fucking sucks. You always so, say, <laughs> like, you're like, it's going to suck, you, but you yeah. have to do I love yours. just like, you have to do it. You just, you have to. Yeah, I know, but it's like, what I, it's hard working out and it's also hard being in a body where you feel trapped and like, you don't have clothes that fit and like, you feel gross. It's like, that's also hard. So like, you just have to choose the hard that gets you closer to what you want, you know, like. I, I'm not some, you know, I'm I'm definitely not like, yay, let's work out. This is so like I'm not that type. Yes, that's not me yeah, at all. Especially they are, and God bless them, you know. But that's not me. <laughs> no, I don't wake up in the morning for my workout. I mean, every now and then. But but here, well, I will if if I love the instructor and I know I'm gonna have a good time, right? If I yeah. Instructors, fun, lively, plays good mu music, support. Yeah, yeah. It's good music. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. like. I'm going to be going on a hike and it's going to be like this new, like cool place. But again, it's because yeah. I know I'm going to be entertained in the process. I know okay, mm -hmm. this person will play music I like. I know that this mountain will have some kind of view that I will like. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did really need mm -hmm. like a trade off. Yeah. Like, what are you going to give me? Yeah, what do I get out of this? <laughs> get out of you, mountain. The mountain. <laughs> trees i don't know maybe you want you want like a bird to like come on your shoulder like song of the south over here i'm like yes yeah actually <laughs> that would be great <laughs> i would love to do that have you um have you been able to see like abraham hicks live i did i went once live in la it was awesome yeah yeah it was awesome. trying to get called no i didn't i'm the same I, yeah I'm, i like to observe you know but, and I, I mean, it was awesome seeing it in person, but I feel like it's just as awesome listening to it. I mean, I agree. I, you know, it, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm such a junkie for it that like, I like to, I, I, I sort of like the videos in the morning, like, cause it's just, there's no distractions. I feel like there's just like a lot of distraction in person, you know, like yeah. too much happening, you know, I just want to get it like the straight up the. Right. And you want to like pick the theme that you want or like, you know, mm -hmm. whatnot, whereas it's very mm -hmm. predictable. I've, I've gone in LA and then I went one time in Philly and it's good. I agree. It's yeah. Good. You feel really high. Like when you're tapped in, yeah. there's a lot of people, a lot of activity going on. So I get too distracted. I'm doing too much people watching. Like I just want the message, you know? Yeah. I'm a big people watcher or like, I'm like not paying attention to what Abraham's doing because then I'm like thinking about like, well, how would I respond to this person? Yeah. But yeah. Mm -hmm. like a whole different mm -hmm. way. And then I'm like, wait, why am I not doing this? And then I'm like, wait, how much money is she probably making off of this event? Oh, a hundred percent. You're like counting the people to see how much she's making on this. And I'm like, okay, well, good for her. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, wait, who's my person that I chat on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, leave it. <laughs> I was like, you're better off just being a monk making alcohol in a cave. I'm like, all right. <laughs> do that but uh love it love all of this so you have a program coming up like a certification yep, yep. so i run an eight-week accountability program so my business is called school of thought mm -hmm. t-h-o-t that hoe over there is a pun it's a joke don't take it too seriously um and then i have um so you you don't have to do the whole program you can get, like get my classes on patreon and get the live links to class on patreon too but if you want a little extra, I run an eight week program called Thought Certification. And we do, you work out with me while I teach live four classes a week and they're all on video. And then you get, uh, we track macros. So you get a personalized meal plan. We drink uh, a gallon of water a day, you walk 10,000 steps a day. And then you get put into a little accountability group with five other women and an accountability coach. And we hold your hand every day so that you are accountable with your food diary and your workouts and your steps and your water. And um, I think that's really like the thing that sets apart my program because like the accountability is really what <laughs> everybody's, a lot of people's issue is, you know, like 100%. any, any fitness program is going to work if you do it it's just like doing it that's the problem or you do it really well for three weeks and you're like where's my fucking Victoria's Secret modeling contract like what the fuck and then you quit because you don't see these drastic changes in three weeks meanwhile like it fucking takes time you know so 
the accountability allows for the consistency, which is what changes your body, you know? So um, the accountability is just, it's awesome. And it's, we've just grown into like a really cool community of women supporting other women. And yeah, and it's, it's fun. I mean, it's fun and people have made like real friendships from it. And it's just, it's cool the way it's grown. It's really cool. And it's weird that you can feel so close to people over cyberspace, you know, I kind of was like, how's this going to work? And honestly, like the accountability is, it makes sense that not every program would do that because it's a pain in the ass, like on the business end, you know, but it really is what makes it work, you know? It's true. I mean, I've run online courses and you see the dropout and it's nothing, it's not Uh because the program's bad or, or people... no don't want to do it but it's just a natural part especially online I mean in person too oh uh-huh, yeah drop out and as a life coach like accountability is like everything so it's everything it's everything it's, it's everything it, it's how you do it I mean to master your own accountability is it's possible for sure but what like yeah but why if you don't if you can have a community and people to do it with like that's so much better well yeah and I think it's also like we're so hyper focused on like being independent and doing everything yourself and it's like that's actually not how we're designed we're pack animals we're like designed to help each other it doesn't mean you're codependent it means you're human it's like we're supposed to like we're so quick to over pathologize everything as like codependence or this like no we need each other and it's easier to do shit together and especially women with other women I think it's so uncomfortable for many women to like support other women or be supported by other women. There's so much like ingrained, like so much jealousy and com- competition that's been ingrained with us, you know, which again is like just programming, you know, and I think it's just really um, powerful to have to be with women and practice supporting other women. And like, it's just makes it more fun too, you know, and yeah. So yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, do you see yourself ever doing like a big like like I see you doing like an all day like a in person, like a retreat type uh, thing? Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking I want to start doing retreats in Greece. Um, maybe yeah. next year. Yeah, yeah, I would love to do that. It would be so fun. Just like a week on a Greek island with a bunch of mm-hmm. ladies working out and doing all the you know. And that would be a cool like way to like everyone that did the accountability program it's like if you got to x y and z it's like you get first pick to be like mm-hmm. sign up for the retreat well yeah and there's like so many women who do so many cool things and offer so many cool services in our um program now you know we have like tarot readers or you know all but yoga teachers meditation teachers sound bath like all all these and entities are like attorneys and a hundred percent yeah so it's just it's great networking too you know just for everybody you know it's like now whenever i'm like i need something i'm like well let me just check the like lounge in the discord because like somebody in the program does that somebody in the program is a lawyer somebody in the program is an accountant somebody in the program does it you know and so it's just nice to be able to like have a group of women where you're like, we all got each other, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, kudos to you for just letting it happen and evolve the, like in the way that it did. And like, what a beautiful testament to where you are personally and then professionally as well. So thank you. We'd love to see it. So what would be like, what mantra could you leave us with? I mean, my favorite mantra is miracles are happening. That feels- that's my favorite. That feels most fitting. Yeah. Miracles are happening. And it's like when you look for miracles, you find miracles. When you look for fucking bullshit, you find bullshit, you know? So it's. I think it's It's good to practice seeing miracles and believing that they're happening. And, and then you know, celebrations beget celebrations, you know? So, yeah, miracles are happening and the universe supports me. Those are my two favorites. The universe supports me is a mantra I use when I meditate and I just do it in my head over and over again. And that one really, I think that one was even probably before miracles are happening. The universe supports me really gave me a sense of peace and like trust. Right. Like it's going to be okay. I think the biggest thing that we want to know in this life I find is reassurance and just it's going to be okay, isn't it? And it's yeah. It is. Yeah. And it's, you know, that things are happening for me, not to me. 
Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, thank you for that. And thanks for taking the space. The jam. With thank you. you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, of course. And we'll put all the things in the show notes so people can stay connected. And oh. I'm excited to see how your travels pan out. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs>